have a 41 year old uh, male having a bilateral mixed hearing loss and uh, more severe on the right ear we have 40 db bone gap on the right side and 20 on the left side uh, so of course I will do the right side now and we'll probably have to operate the left the left ear later on over the next following years it's difficult to know so I already took the vein graft from uh, the dorsal face of the hand and we'll now start the, the procedure using a transcanal approach so what you can see here is the right tympanic membrane here and you see the speculum here which is which is fixed by the speculum holder this means that i will use as usual a transcanal approach to perform the operation and it's all right so i will fill the ear canal with some bit betadine and then we will start the procedure all right so we'll use now a, a round knife to perform the skin incision Okay, so here is, uh, you can see the tympanic membrane down in the deep, all right, you can see that. And this is uh, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9 o'clock, uh, right here. So I will perform a skin incision here using a round knife running from 6 to 12, like this, a posterior incision of the skin. And I will now elevate the flap until I reach the annulus, so I'm using two instruments here at a time. We've got a, 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 an elevator, a smooth elevator on the right and a sucker on the left. Ciseau, s'il vous plaît. Transcanal means that the entire procedure is performed via the external auditory canal whereas the andor is different there is an incision which is running outside of the outside the uh, ear canal now it's purely transcanal so now we are joining the uh, the annulus here you see the white line which is the annulus so i know that i'll be able now to elevate the annulus and enter the middle ear cleft okay so let's take now a, a, a very thin instrument to open the middle ear mucosa now uh, you see the annulus here Ciseau. you see the quarter tympani also below the level of the skin Décolleur encore and you can see a little bit of the distal tip of the incus and the uh, beginning of the stapes there. But I will show you this in a second. All right. Here we go. Table vers moi, s'il vous plaît. Okay, so what you can see here is the promontory here the round window niche here, you see the distal tip of the incus and the stapes head uh, right here. And this is the corded tympani, which is fine. Now we need to do a body rim resection to uh, have a better exposure of the facial nerve, the fallopian canal. That's important. So I'm going to use the curette to do the bony rim resection until I have the right exposure. The main landmark in this surgery is the facial nerve, so we need to have a clear exposure of the facial nerve. And the second one is the pyramidal process of the stapes tendon. So we know that we need to see both. Okay, it's nearly done. So of course we always try to preserve the corded tympani as much as we can. In some occasions it's difficult, but in this case it's quite fine. We have a nice exposure of the corded tympani. And taste disturbance is a problem, but it's really interesting to know that in, it's always difficult to know. Sometimes we preserve it perfectly and the, the patients still complain. 
and in some occasion we overstretch it or even cut it and it don't complain so it's pretty strange and usually for it's uh, not permanent so it's quite fine Okay, now I think the exposure looks fine. Tête en déclip, s'il vous plaît. I'm going to show you the landmarks. Stop. Okay, now, now you can see... You see the malice here. I didn't show you the malice. Here is Dinkus, the, the quarter timpani. Now the stapis head, you can see the posterior cruise of the stapis, the stapis tendon here. And the fascia nerve on the left, which is not um, decent, covered. So it's just fine. A little bit decent here, but it's quite nice. So the first step will be to separate Dinkus from the stapis in order to uh, check the ossicular chain mobility. What we need to know is to be sure that there is no uh, pit tympanic malis uh, fixation. Nous sommes ici, vous le voyez, à l'intérieur de l'oreille euh, moyenne. Le tympan a été relevé et on voit donc les différentes euh, parties de la chaîne des osselets. Ici se trouve le marteau, le premier osselet. Ici l'enclume et enfin dans la profondeur l'étrier. Alors nous allons séparer l'enclume de l'étrier pour pouvoir tester la mobilité des différents osselets. C'est la première étape. So I'm using a joint knife here. You see a very fine joint knife on the right and a 0.9 millimeter diameter socket with my left hand. I'm go inside. I'm going inside the the, the joint here, the incudiostapel joint, and I'm separating now the uh, incus from the stapes. Voilà. Donc c'est séparé. On va pouvoir tester maintenant le marteau et l'enclume. So I will check the malleus incus mobility first. I'm going to move the malleus, and you see that. The incus is following the movement, which is fine. Donc, marteau en clume sont bien mobiles. And I'm now checking the stapes, which is fixed. Par contre, vous voyez que si je teste l'étrier, on a un blocage complet de l'étrier. Voilà, ciseaux. Donc, on va poursuivre avec une petite fraise diamantée de 7 dixièmes de millimètre qui va me permettre d'aller découper les branches de l'étrier. All right, now I'm going to uh, drill out. The stapes superstructure, the aim is to remove the stapes arch by uh, drilling out the posterior cruise and then the anterior cruise. Voilà, on va aller donc fraiser d'abord la branche postérieure de l'étrier. Without any pressure, you see that we're just drilling out the posterior cruise now. Okay, and I will do it also with the anterior cruise. So it's more difficult to reach the anterior cruise, which is more or less hidden. Voilà, je suis en train ici de fraiser donc la branche postérieure de l'étrier, ce qui va me permettre de retirer ce qu'on appelle la superstructure de l'étrier. Voilà. Je crois que c'est bouché. Trois dessous. Okay, let's remove now the stapes arch, and then we will have a better access and a better view of the, uh, the stapes foot plate. Voilà, on va retirer donc maintenant les branches de l'étrier. Et on va avoir <coughs> un bel accès sur la platine de l'étrier. Je crois que les branches seront retirées. So I'm using a, a little hook to do that. Okay, now it's fine. The elbow window is a little bit narrow here. So we'll have to drill up maybe a little bit of promontory on the right. And now we need to measure the distance from the stapes foot plate to the incus in order to determine the prosthesis length. Voilà, on va mesurer maintenant la hauteur entre la platine de l'étrier ici dans la profondeur et l'enclume de façon à connaître la longueur du piston. So I'm using a stapes measuring rod. You see, I'm touching the foot plate down in the deep and we have three kind of notches here and we just need to know which one is becoming in the front of the incus, which is the, the, the upper one. This means 4.5, so it means that I will have to cut the prosthesis at 4.5, 4 mm 50. First, I just need to enlarge a little bit the uh, approach here by drilling out the residual cruise of the posterior cruise, I mean. 
So I'm going to use again a 0.7 millimeter diameter uh, diamond dust burr. Voilà, je vais juste retirer le reste de branche postérieure de l'étrier qui me gênait un petit peu pour aborder la platine ici de, de l'étrier. So I'm draining out a little bit of promontory without any pressure here. Just leaving the diamond dust doing the job by itself. So it's bleeding a little bit of course, but this is fine. It's only a little bit of the, of the vessels running over the promontory. Okay, now it's fine. And now we have a better view of the tapis foot plate. And now be able to start drilling out the stapidotomy in a second. Voilà, on va, on va ouvrir maintenant la platine de l'étrier. Le but étant de faire une ouverture de 0,8 mm de diamètre. So we need to do, uh, to perform a fenestration of the labyrinth by performing a 0.8 mm diameter uh, stapidotomy using uh, this 0.7 mm diameter uh, diamond dust spur. It's a low speed drill, which is controlled with, this, uh, with the foot pedal. So now I'm drilling out the foot plate without any pressure, as you can see, and we will be able to see in a second the, the per lymphatic fluid. Sometimes I'm using the laser, but in some occasion where the, uh, the approach is fine like this with a clear stapes foot plate fixation, I don't need it too much, so that's fine. You see, I'm using the sucker very close to the stapidotomy, but not exactly at the level. I need to control the fluid leakage, but I don't want to suck into the labyrinth. The risk is to, to get a, a dry labyrinth, which would lead to uh, centrinal hearing loss, so we need to avoid that, of course. Voilà, l'ouverture est presque faite. Mais du côté gauche, ici, j'utilise un petit aspirateur de 7 dixièmes de millimètre. The sucker is 0.7 millimeter in diameter. And now we have a nice uh, stapidotomy here. I will uh, cover it now with the vein graft. Okay, let's take the vein and cover the stapidotomy. Voilà, on va prendre maintenant la veine que j'ai prélevée tout à l'heure en début d'intervention et qui va me permettre d'assurer l'étanchéité de l'orienteur. Donc, you can see the, the vein graft here. So we see here the uh, intima of the vein which is the medial side on the other side we've got the adventitial side which as you can see is the sticky side so i will uh, stick the vein the adventitial side of the vein to the stapes uh, foot plate this vein was taken uh, from the dorsal face of the hand <coughs> and the aim here of course is to seal the labyrinth that's the main aim of the uh, of the uh, vein graft te interposition technique so I will introduce the vein with the sucker and I will, as you will see, stretch the vein with the needle. Voilà, on va aller introduire donc la veine dans, euh, au dessus de la platine de l'étrier avec l'aspiration et on va aller étaler la veine avec la petite, euh, le petit instrument sur la droite. So you see I'm stretching the vein, I'm holding the vein with the sucker and I'm just uh, stretching the vein. And we, uh, thanks to the translucence of the vein, usually we can easily find the location of the stapidotomy. Now it's fine, we have a nice uh, vein graft into position. And I just have to introduce now the, the piston. But first, of course, I need to cut it at the right length, which as you remember was 4.5 when I measured it. So we're going to cut it right now. So I'm using a 0.4 millimeter diameter Teflon prosthesis. It's called a cost Teflon uh, piston. You see the loop which will be crimped around the incus and uh, the measuring rod, the, the, the cutting block. So, voilà, on va couper donc la prothèse à la longueur mesurée, c'est-à-dire 4,50 mm. This prosthesis is 0.4 millimeter, donc uh, 4 dixièmes de millimètre de diamètre. Et on va ouvrir maintenant l'anneau qui va me servir à attacher la prothèse à l'enclume. So we need to now open the loop of the piston which will be crimped around the anchor. So we need to break the memory of the loop like this in a vertical plane. Voilà, je 
casse la mémoire de, du téflon pour pouvoir ensuite la refermer autour de l'enclume. Ok. So we need to introduce the shaft, the prosthesis shaft first, and then the loop of the piston will be crimped around the incus. Two steps, usually. Ok, so I'm introducing the prosthesis with the sucker. On introduit la prothèse avec euh, l'aspirateur. The, the, the shaft first, and then the loop is passed around the incus like this, and then will be crimped. Can they? Ok, it's nearly done. As I said, there is a memory with the, with the piston, the Teflon. So it's supposed that the memory will help uh, the closure of the piston. You see that the, the problem is the, uh, the quarter tympani here. So we need to pass the quarter on the other side. Like this. Here we go, and now we just need to crimp the loop. Voilà, on va refermer maintenant l'anneau de façon à ce que le piston soit bien attaché à l'enclume. So we will force the, the loop to crimp. Donc on va resserrer maintenant cet anneau. We can use a curb forceps or two hooks like this to close the loop gently like this. And this will be uh, really fixed and stable. Voilà, donc le, le, le piston est bien, bien en place. On va aller vérifier ce qu'on appelle le signe de la courbure. C'est-à-dire que le piston doit, s'il est dans, dans l'ouverture, dans la stapédotomie, eh il ne peut pas se déplacer. Et quand on essaye de le déplacer, il se courbe. C'est ce qu'on appelle le signe de la courbure. So we're now looking for the bending sign. The piston should bend but not move. Which would be a good proof to ensure the uh, correct location of the prosthesis shaft. The piston should bend but not move. This is the bending side. And now the mobility from the malice looks also absolutely fine. Okay, so the operation is finished. I would just now replace the tympano metal flap uh, uh, in its original position. So you can see it, it's a very small incision and I will put the, the skin uh, flap back and the last point will be to introduce uh, a marrow cell inside the ear canal which will be removed on the fifth day with the first audiometric test a very short term post-op on this day six just to rule out any uh, complications such as uh, sensorineural hearing loss that's the major point and then the patient comes to see me again at three months voilà donc la, la prothèse est donc bien mobile bien attachée uh, à l'enclume, allez-y, euh, et on termine avec, après avoir remis en place le, ce qu'on appelle le lambeau tympanoméatal, c'est-à-dire la peau du conduitif externe et le tympan, on termine avec la mise en place d'un petit mérocel, une petite mèche qui sera retirée au cinquième jour avec un audiogramme réalisé le lendemain, en sachant que ce premier audiogramme qui est fait donc au sixième jour n'a pas de signification en termes de résultat, donc il ne faut pas s'inquiéter si euh, le résultat n'est pas encore satisfaisant, l'amélioration pouvant être très progressive sur plusieurs jours, voire quelques mois. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous nous verrons au troisième mois pour un bilan plus complet. Voilà, je vous remercie, je vous dis à très bientôt et merci beaucoup.